Okay, I had a request for a fluke mold video. Uh, if anybody has any requests, just leave them on the, you know, bottom of the videos on one of them, and uh, I'm gonna get most of those conversations by email so I can uh, check and see if it's a video I can do for y'all. The fluke video I can do, I've done before. I've got flukes. I use them by the truckload. Uh, if you're going to shoot a lot of flukes, I really recommend spending the money on an aluminum mold. They are expensive, about a hundred bucks. Um, but you get some real nice baits. You can do two, three colors with them. I'll do a video on that here another day. But the first step in the fluke mold is this very peculiar step. Uh, what I'm actually doing is the first step is to spread the body of the bait apart. With any luck, you want it to stay naturally apart. And that's hard to see, but you want that little gap in there. So I put it, uh, a battery, AAA battery in between, and I put that block, just any kind of weight on there, um, for about a week. Mm, probably four days. So you can see it, they stay open. So that's the first step. Now, ideally, I would leave that block on there, but I'm not going to reset that up because it it can take 10 minutes to get that all where it all balances out right. That's probably the hardest step um, in the whole thing. Then there's some other parts that are tricky too. Okay, I decided to redo this for you. Last time I let the um, pop sit up too long trying to find a good camera angle. So we're going to try this again here. Try to get the bubbles out of there. So you have to know how long your bait is compared to your container. You need you know make sure you have room for everything. I was trying to hurry here. I'm going to do a better job this time. So you have to spread the bait open so the pop can get in there. Okay? It has to get in there. That's why we leave the battery in there. So we're going to spread this open. Fill up that chamber, and then I'm going to try to arrange them in the right place here. Okay, I'll fiddle with them some more here in a second. We're just going to keep repeating that process. Whenever I, I do a mold, I try to get at least two baits in there. Depending on the mold, I'll do as many baits that will comfortably fit and give me room to work. So this one here, three for sure. Normally I can get four baits, four of these baits in there. This one turned on me. I use a small paintbrush a lot to maneuver the baits. You can usually work, have plenty of time to work the baits around where you need them. I try to get them all set for the most part. Sometimes you have to work them to be able to set the next bait, but I try to get them all set and then work them into the exact position. 
Uh, see that I messed up. If you're doing this mold, or any mold for that matter, if you're doing multiple baits and you mess up a little bit, always keep a wet towel handy too. It's easy to clean your fingers right off. So if you're, if you're doing molds, especially if you're doing multiple baits and one of them messes up, you know, you can finish it out. It may be usable even if you think it's not. But even if that particular bait isn't usable, probably the other baits that you did will be. Some people do a very small custom made box for their pop molds and they just do one at a time. Well, if you're using a half a cup in your custom made box and you're doing one bait at a time, you're going to use the same amount of pop that I'm using. I'm doing four baits at a time and I've only got to keep track of one mold. See that stuff is already setting up. Now this particular bait is actually, this is one of the hardest ones to do. Because you try to get the back down, it's going to be a flat pour bait. You know the back is going to be flat or slightly rounded if you get enough plastic in there. But you're trying to do it from the top down. I've, I've never tried to glue the backs down and fill the cavities. That may work, or the, they may just flop over. Most of my molds I do from the top. Of course, most of my molds are two-part molds anyways. I prefer to do two-part molds. I did a Yum Lizard. Um, this is a Zellamander, which is the twin tail. So I did this injection mold the other day. And I just shot this bait a little bit ago. I, I like the, the two-part molds. I mean, the baits look just like store-bought baits. So now we're going to let this harden up about 30 minutes. And then we'll pull it out and I'll show you all the next step.